Hello and welcome back to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. Today we're taking a look at the Blocks 1 Mark 2. But before we get started, roll those credits. Today's video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare have thousands of courses on hundreds of different topics where you can learn at your pace. Check out the link in the video description to get your first month for free or stay till the end of this video to find out more about the great services they offer. Okay, so let's start off with the specs of this machine. So build volume is 200 by 210 by 210 on the Z. Uh, it prints in 1.75 mil filament. It can do speeds up to 60 millimeters a second. It comes with a 0.4 nozzle and the, and the hot end goes to 270 degrees. It has a filament runout sensor, automatic bed leveling, and a dual drive remotely mounted extruder. Hot bed goes to 100 degrees centigrade. It has marlin on it. And the way you interact with it is through the click wheel screen at the front, just there. And it's a full size SD card slot at the front. There is also a USB port around the side that enables you to connect it to your computer. So you can do pronto face and all of that good stuff. And it's a 24 volt hot end, all of that good stuff. This machine answers for me a question that I find myself asking a lot recently, which is, what do I want from a 3D printer? I mean, really want. Because when you say you want auto bed leveling, or you want mesh leveling, or you want triple Z axis, or you want direct drive, you're asking about features, not what do you want from a 3D printer? Because fundamentally what I want is to get a machine out of a box, turn it on, and it work. Enter Federer. This machine works. And it works quite well. We'll take a look at some prints in a minute. It works really well. It does not have the largest build volume. 200 by 210 by 210 is smaller than an Ender 3, but it does do really nice prints in that space. I have, it does not have a carborundum glass bed or whatever they're calling it these days. It doesn't have a flexible steel sheet or PEI or any of that, it's a glass plate. It doesn't have linear rails, it has linear rods. It doesn't have TMC drivers on every axis. It has TMC on X and Y and there's A series drivers on E and Z. And I'm okay with all of that. This machine right now on the website is, uh, is this machine right now is 799 euros, which puts it right up against a fully built Prusa Mark III. And that is a very, very, strong competitor to start taking shots at. This machine does do some gorgeous prints. Really nice quality, consistent extrusion. The support settings that came on it were pretty good. Um, a weird quirk that I found was that in Cura version 4.12, um, there is a stock profile for the Blocks machine in there. For some reason, in the new version of Cura 5, there isn't. It's been taken out. I don't know why. We tried doing ABS on the machine. So this makes some pretty bold claims right out of the box. It claims that it'll do PLA, ABS, PETG, TPU, nylon, wood fill, and metafill filament out of the box we printed this guy in ABS. 
Now I want to be clear that we print, um, my printers are all in the summer house or in my office, which is a pretty static temperature. There's no draft. Temperature stays pretty much around 25 to 26 degrees ambient because I'm always running other printers in there as well. This printed really, really nicely, but there is no front to this and there is no top. So if you want to print ABS, you really do actually need to enclose this. Now again, where this was placed in my office, it's a fairly static temperature anyway, there's no cold draft, so I didn't get any warp or separation or anything else. Did a very nice job with the ABS. Um, but I don't really think it's gonna print ABS for everybody out of the box. I think you would need to put this in a little grow tent or something like that, or try and figure out a way to put little doors on it or a little one of the top hat things that you can get for things like Ultimakers and things like that. And if you compare this to the likes of an Ultimaker, which is three grand for their base model, shaping up pretty nicely. Um, what I will say is take a look in the video description, go to the Blocks um, website, because what they do have is a new machine coming out. Now the new machine coming out is the R21. The R21 is larger, it's direct drive, it's got a really nice touch screen, it's checking a lot of boxes. The R21, is a very, very interesting machine that gets me quite excited about what this company is doing long term. Um, it does pretty much the same thing this one does, but the R21 is clearly taking shots at the new, um, at the new um, Ultimaker, uh, whereas this is just a slightly older design at this point. Um, there is obviously a price difference between those two, I mean, the new one, the, the new R21, I think is 210 by 300 by, three, uh, by 250. Um, and as I say, it's got a really nice touchscreen. It's got linear rails. It's got a USB type A port. It actually has a clogging sensor as well as a fill out, filament runout sensor, which is super cool. But we're not here to talk about that machine. We're not here to talk about the R21. We're here to talk about this. So before we go any further, let's show you guys some prints. So let's start with the 3D print test. So there we go, get this to focus. That is a really nice top. Really well done on the bridging. The part calling on this is really, really good. And if we take a look on the underside here, we can see that on the short throw, we're getting nice consistent results all the way up to 60, which is here. And on the long throw, uh, we're getting all the way up to about 60 again on the long throw. So the part cooling is quite nice. Um, there's a really interesting way the bed levels with this, and that results in this being a really quite a nice consistent first layer with that nice glass bed shine on it. We'll talk about the auto bed leveling in a minute. We tried vase mode. That came out very, very nicely. So again, very nice first layer on there. Getting that, getting that glass finish, and then nice consistent extrusion all the way around. This was all printed with a fairly cheap uh, PLA that we have. Um, it's called 3D Kaij, I think it is. And it's just a super cheap one that we got on um, AliExpress. This is a blown up honey badger. And of all the machines we've printed the honey badger with, this is the only one that has ever managed to print this spool in its entirety without it breaking when we take the supports off. Um, again, really nice first layer on the feet. Really nice results on the, uh, on, the, on the hot end that he's holding. And even the support interface layer right under his chin is still really passable. I mean, a nice extrusion, a nice finish, a really, really good print. This was done with a slightly nicer PLA. So this is an Azure Film PLA. Um, we get this from uh, 3D Filiprint. So the link in the video description for 3D Filiprint. Um, and this is an articulated fo uh, focus bot. 
and again it's all that's all printed as one and it's all flexible all very nice lovely first layer finish all of that stuff printed really nicely really good layers on this and all of that look at that really really nice quality and then this was done in abs so this is one of the Nazgul that you can get off of, I believe this was off of Thingiverse. I'll find the link and put it in the video description. Um, but this, again, ABS came out really, really nice. Look at that extrusion. Really, really nice result. So the way this prints is actually like this. And it only really just fitted in the print volume. But this is all supports under here. And again, printed really, really nicely. Finished really well. Came out great so the question is again is what do you want from your 3d printer because what i want is this i want good quality versatile prints on a machine that i can rely on this has a really interesting way of leveling the bed so underneath this hot end each side has a physical z limit switch it goes to each corner of the bed and it moves the bed up, triggers the Z limit switch, and then you, it gives you a guidance on the, uh, on the touch screen, you physically level the bed with the knobs underneath. So what that means is it's not creating a mesh level, it is creating a true level. It is physically leveling the bed to make sure it is the right and it does that two or three times around the bed and you adjust the knobs each time and it gives you a very very nice first layer to get the abs to stick properly i did have to put a bit of hairspray on the glass i challenge that's fairly normal um, but all the pla went down with almost no with, with no adhesive or anything else and um, this is not a premium filament that went into this at all and it has done a lovely job producing those. A really lovely job. And then we get to the price. 799 euros. That stings, right? There are, there are other machines that produce great quality that are cheaper. My only caveat to that is that this is very well built. It's put together properly. You get it out of the box. You load up Cura, four point whatever it is. There is a profile in there for this. And these were all printed with the stock profiles. I did not play about with extrusion. Didn't play about with any of the settings. I just sliced a bunch of things, put them on the SD card, load up the filament and here we are this isn't after hours of tuning this is out of the box off it goes in which case you are putting this right up against a fully built prusa mark iii which is cheaper than i might add and unless you're going to miss that 20 30 mil on your axes which maybe you will maybe you won't this is a really solid machine the fact that you could just pop this in a little grow tent and you could do ABS in most, in most locations, I really like. There are some drawbacks. It's not all good news. The Z axis is a little bit loud. It is an A series driver on there. Um, I don't like it. It's, it's, it's noisy. Um, I am super over click wheel screens. I am, I am over them. They were a novelty, never. They were essential ages ago. We've moved past click wheel screens. To be fair, the R21, which is their new machine that is coming out, has a very nice touch screen that is on it. Creality brought out the end of 3 V2. They tried to trick you into thinking it was a it was a touch screen. And it wasn't. It was just a colour version of a click wheel. That was fun. Do we all remember when they did that to us? This machine is actually performing really, really nicely. It's going to stay as part of our, of our overall workflow and it's doing a really good job at the things that we're asking it to print. 
as long as you go in with realistic expectations that you know that you're gonna that you may have to do a little bit of tuning or that ABS isn't gonna work for everybody, I have no complaints about this machine. Not really. Um, I may end up changing the A series driver for a, for a TMC. I don't think there's a real reason why that needs to be an A series driver. I get it for E because an A series driver can be a little bit more powerful, but for for Z for Z. I think you can, that should have been a TMC personally. But it's a really nice machine. It does exactly what it says on the tin. What more is there to say? It's consistent. The auto bed leveling is super easy. It's guided through the tuck, through the click wheel. And it's really good to use. It's really fun. One of the major things that puts people off of 3D printing is the faffing that you have to do. It's the extra work. The extra work that on a lot of Facebook groups you get mocked about not being born with that knowledge like Highlander, right? It's the idea that you didn't sort of carry over from a past life on exactly how to level a bed or something like that. This walks you through it. And it's one of the things that Prusa has really capitalized on as part of their business model, which is that anybody can pick up a Prusa, go through the process of um, the, 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 the guided setup process that's part of the Prusa, and that calibration test will let you know everything about your machine and that everything is working. And this has a very similar job. I'm impressed with it. I'm excited about the R21, because the R21 is a different animal. That is way more like an Ultimaker. It has changeable cores. It has filament flow sensors as well as filament runout sensors. It has weird, it has little RGB lights that can even let you know when it's starting to struggle. Like it's, it's got a dual drive direct gear, all metal extruder. And you know, it's, it's been redesigned from the ground up. It's got Wi-Fi. Um, it, it's got Wi-Fi built in, and there's an OctoPrint Blocks plugin that allows you to to immediately connect to the machine. You know, the the R21 is ticking a lot of boxes for me. A lot of boxes for me, and this is just the previous version. That's all. That's not to say that this machine is redundant or doesn't have its place. It's just to say that this machine serves a purpose, and the R21 gets me a little bit excited about what it could do. So let's talk score. I am going to give this an eight and a half out of 10. It's a little bit noisy. I wish it was direct drive. It is dual drive, but I wish it was direct drive. And I'm really not a fan of a click wheel touchscreen anymore. I think we're past that point as a community. Other than that, I cannot fault the print quality. It is turning out consistently good, if not great, results. And that's what you want. Repeatability, reliability. So that's it. If you want to pick up your own Blocks machine, take a look in the link in the video description. That is not an affiliate link. We do not have an affiliate program with these guys. They sent us this machine for a discounted price, but we did part with our own money to get it. And there is no agreement here for us to get any kickbacks. If you decide that you like the look of it and you want to go and buy one, check out the link in the video description. It'd be great for you to go and do that. The company is based in Portugal and they ship out of there. The shipping was actually very good. If you take a look at our live stream, you'll see that the, uh, the, the I think it was FedEx managed to really kick the nuts out of that box, but, uh, but there was no damage to the, actual, to the actual machine at all. You take it out, you turn it on, it's a 10 minute leveling process and away you are printing. And that's the kind of reliability that I look for in the machines that I actually want to keep. Other than that, guys and dolls, thanks very much for joining us. Keep an eye on the channel. We've got a lot more stuff coming out. Thanks for seeing us. Stay safe. This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform with thousands of courses on hundreds of different topics. Everything from animation through to After Effects, Adobe Premiere, there's things on gardening, bakery, there's even some great courses on 3D printing. 
We've recently been using it on the channel and we've started to try and develop our skills in Adobe Premiere so we can edit and grade these, uh, these videos much better than we do. So for example, we've recently done a course on color grading with Fred Treveno, and we've also done a piece on how to organize your B-roll with Sean Morton. And it really helped us to change the way we approach our videos. Everything we've been doing up until now has, has really been fairly basic, and this is helping us to level up and get to that next level. So there's actually a link in the video description. The first thousand people to join are gonna get a month's free trial. And during that time, you'll be able to access all of the content, all of the courses that are on there, and you'll really be able to learn at your own pace. There's so many different videos out there on, on how to sort of learn new skills. It can be really difficult sometimes to find professionally curated and produced content that enables you to learn at the level that you want to and allows you to dip in and out as and when you want. So don't forget to take a look at the link in the video description. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks very much for watching this video, guys. Stay safe.